So today we're going to do something uh, related to something we talked about a little bit earlier. So I gave you this image before and uh, maybe it didn't make sense why I did. I kind of talked about it at the same time that I explained it in a different way. And it may not have made much sense why I used this image to represent our own psyche as a, a human being riding an elephant. But uh, this is one of my best ways to conceive the ego as related to the rider. And I'll explain why in a moment here. But uh, ego and then the animal being two separate things. And uh, I think that's an important way to conceive it. But we'll, we'll descri describe more as we go through here. So first of all, I want us to talk about raising an elephant. Because there's some interesting parallels here. So if an elephant is born in captivity, just like a dog when you're when you raise a puppy, is you don't try to train him in the earliest stages of their life. Uh, you have to wait a little bit of time. So a dog, it's usually around a year, usually a little earlier than a year if they're going to do any serious service. But uh, an elephant, we have to wait a little bit longer. So it's usually two to three years is when they before they start training them specifically for the jobs that they're going to be doing later on. Uh, during this period of 7 to 12 years, there's kind of a split in the middle, and we'll talk about this in a bit in a second. But uh, there's a lot of discipline in this time, so lots of practice and discipline, practice of what they're going to be doing. And uh, this stuff's kind of somewhat hard to look at for us, and we don't like these images of keeping an animal restrained or keeping it chained. But uh, there's a way we can relate this to our own lives, too, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Uh, usually the process of this intense training ends with sexual maturity, which is around 12 years. Uh, anywhere from 10 to 12, there's a different sexual maturity ages, usually for the males and the females, and it's kind of the opposite of us, actually. But around this age, anyway, is when they get to it, but they don't typically begin doing full-time work until somewhere around about 16 years old. Um, I find this very interesting because... Uh, Animal, our elephants as well live to be about 70 to 80 years old, which is around about the time that uh, we live around too, or at least in recent years, that's where we kind of got to. Uh, usually what happens with the elephant is that the teeth wear down, and it's not so much the years that take over and that are the problem, but it's just that it's, they, they can't really effectively eat when they become older. A lot of times they heard about them doing different things where they give the elephants dentures and thinking then they could live quite a few more years. But anyway, it, the, roughly the, the years kind of line up with our developmental stages. And I'll explain that in just a moment here. But first, I think it's important to do this. Uh, we're going to talk about our two uh, approaches that we were chatting about the other day. I'm not sure if it's crystal clear yet. But this V and V is that Viking victim thing. So if we perceive situations as Viking and victims, it's a way of seeing the world through condemnation. And if we look at condemnation, it's sort of an uh, inherent tacit belief that the person above it, if you're condemning somebody, is usually above them on some level. So usually it's like they think they're uh, superior morality or they believe that they're maybe better in some other way. People don't really respond very well to condemnation. Uh, PETA's had a lot of people in them in, in the past, and I'm not going to make the statement that they haven't done anything positive, but I think that uh, generally a lot of people view them quite negatively. I don't think anybody would disagree with the fact that everybody loves animals and every, animals should be treated really well. I think most people would agree with that, at least at least 90% or even higher what that would agree with that. I don't think there's many people that would disagree with it. And they've had some serious problems if they do. Um, there's another way to deal with this, though. And this guy is one of the best representation, representations of it. And it's interesting that PETA just was condemning him lately. He's been passed away for a while now. But uh, Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, did it through enthusiasm and caring. So when... Irwin saw these kind of things that he didn't always agree with. He, it's not that he agreed with them, but he wouldn't condemn the other people. He usually kind of, he would try to do as much as he could in the situation, but he would never really condemn the other person. 
And I think that a lot of people uh, reacted really positively towards that. And he had such a positive effect overall. People are still talking about him today, even though he's been gone for so long. And uh, it's interesting to think about these words too. So he had so much enthusiasm and he also inspired others. Oops. He inspired many other people. Uh, these words, uh, I, I'm not sure if both come from Greek, but I'm pretty sure enthousi enthusiasm is based on enthusiasmos. And theos means God. So, so don't think of it necessarily as just a, a very uh, non-secular non thing. Uh, but uh, it's it's just about more of this kind of same idea. We'll talk about it in a second. But to be in Theos, to be in God, uh, in this kind of mentality, and there's this inherent belief of of this this kind of to be joyful. Uh, inspiration is similar. In spirit is the is the the core of it. What it came from. So there's this also belief that spirit is very joyful. So our very, very uh, enlightens your being and sort of makes you, and there's something to that too, the sort of enlightening, the lightening yourself. When you feel inspired, you, you, you maybe have the sensation of feeling lighter and um, uh, just generally more positive and there's a bounce to your step and everything else. And there's lots of ways that, to sort of perceive that. But uh, it's, I just find it interesting that these words, before we had a materialistic society, had a very deist orientation to them. So they, they sort of saw it, that coming from this joyful nature. Now there's people that are kind of in the same sort of mentality. So first of all, Caesar Milan, one of the most effective people dealing with dogs, I think. Uh, he had the same kind of personality, <clears throat> I would say, as as uh, our other guy there, our, uh, Steve Irwin. He, he kind of, he would sometimes see puppy mills and, and obviously he doesn't agree with puppy mills. He just tried to do as much as he could in a situation, no one tried to have a positive influence. Uh, this is a really good example of the recent days here. And we have Ellen DeGeneres with uh, George Bush. And a lot of people gave her a lot of flack for this. And she, her defense of it was that uh, just because we disagree with people doesn't mean that we can't be civil to one another. And sort of the, built this bridge building between these two sort of separate factions is the only way to really make any growth. And uh, a really extreme example of this is, uh, this happened just recently as well. And I've seen a lot of people very positively influenced by this one episode. Uh, this, this young boy here, I think he's only 18. His brother was killed by this lady in a mistaken situation where she went into the wrong house and she shot her, his brother and he died. And uh, he, he just told her that he didn't even want her to go to jail. He just wanted her to be happy and to to fill a fulfilled life and they they hugged at the end of it and some a lot of people are so affected by this and I, just to see it even on just those terms obviously this has been very effective for dealing with a problem more than it is to condemn a problem there is that way of seeing it so we can talk about it here the way uh, buddha this is a paraphrase buddha quote but uh Holding on to anger is like holding a hot coal with the intention to throw it. It's only you that gets burned. And uh, these people would maybe agree with that sentiment or <laughs> sentiment, because um, they know that it's not, maybe they're just doing it because it just feels like the right thing to do. But they, they also know that uh, they're, they're, they're going to need the people that they're trying to build bridges with in between them. Uh, there's also another element to this, and this gets back to uh, when we talked about Mother Teresa not wanting to go to an anti-war rally and instead wanting to go to a pro-peace one. So even if we don't think of this strictly on, on those, those kind of principles that we talked about before, uh, this sort of condemnation of anti-war being against something is an investment in that idea. Uh, and we're really going to have to start at least entertaining the idea of mind being a very controlling force in the world. Because uh, we will talk about this very soon, I think within the next couple lectures, but uh, mind is an incredibly, and we can just talk, we'll, we'll talk about it exclusively materialistically, how material can be influenced by mind. And uh, keep in mind that being anti-war would be, if we're investing in the idea of it, we're making it stronger, 
And in pro peace, we are making that stronger as well. So to invest in this idea is, again, with the Viking victim thing. So this is not necessarily just them being trying to make it sound pretty. This is maybe something that they believe. And I don't think it's a coincidence that we hear this from a lot of people that have this sort of overall feeling of, of, of uh, spirituality to them. And it's sort of an inclusive idea of everybody being a positive, uh, positive, joyful, sort of spiritual nature to them. So this is how we're going to conceive it. Um, this, these sort of developmental stages that we've talked about all along are going to very closely parallel what we talked about with our elephant. So if we take a, a young baby, we take it from the, year, the age of zero years, so when it's born, and of course it's developing in utero and everything else as well, but uh, we're just going to start it when it's born. Uh, we're going to draw the first line at about two to three years. And uh, this first stage is called delta. So during delta, there's these sort of very slow brain waves. So it's, it's very, there's not extreme bouncing of it. It's very slow and very drawn out sort of undulating lines going through it. And then when you get to two to three, it kind of switches. And uh, what I'm going to try to ask us to jump onto here as far as developmentally is that's when this sort of part of the mind gets sort of fully developed and it sort of becomes more subconscious rather than conscious. So Delta is this stage up till two to three years. And there's some really interesting work by people like Brené Brown, which talked about a kid doesn't really see himself as an individual during this stage, but I'll leave that to her. Uh, if you want to be more interested in it, you can do the research. It's sort of this hive mind mentality up to this point, but it switches at this point to theta. So theta is a little bit more. So there's a little bit more extremes of the ups and downs, but it's still pretty slow. It's pretty um, laid back. Uh, when it switches up to this next one, this is going to be seven years, years, <laughs> and this is very emotional time in the kid's life, uh, very impressionable age, I'll say, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a sec, <coughs> but this is when the limbic brain is developing, so the mammal brain, kid is a pretty innocent kid, they're, they're not too confrontational at this point. Uh, this is when this is developing, and this is when your brain is what we, in what we call alpha waves. So more often there's these more extreme undulations up and down, and it's becoming more and more frequent, these sort of bouncing back and forth. Uh, the last stage, we're going to end it at 12 years, and your, of course your mind doesn't, or your brain doesn't quit developing at this period, but uh, this is generally when the waves switch. So not necessarily always, but at this point, they switch to beta. Sorry, this is an alpha. So this is at this point, they switch to beta. And beta is very quick, and very sharp lines going up and up and down. And uh, this is not necessarily all of them, but this is the one that is kind of the last major developmental one that comes along. So I'm going to say that two to three is this, or zero to two to three is this, and then two to three to seven is the really developing this. And this becomes subconscious from seven to 12 years, this one gets developed. And if you guys remember, uh, the sort of frontal lobe is where people get this sort of ego uh, association. And that'll be more important in a second here. And I'm going to relate this to that rider. The rider of the elephant is this ego. And uh, this isn't really a an issue, major issue until about seven to 12 years as it starts to come in. And uh, this is this is something that will be more prominent going forward here. Okay, we're going to end part one with talking about this codex here. We're going to make this two parts because there's way too much. I meant to be this to be 10 minutes, this whole thing, but obviously it's not going to make it in that time. So uh, this Codex Mendoza, this is when the Aztecs were be first being studied, uh, people in the Mayan area. I'm not actually even sure this is the Aztecs. 
I think it is though. But anyway, it's around the region and this is them explaining how to raise a kid. So each one of these little dots represents a year. So this is when there's a three year old. And the reason they don't have anything, at least that this is what I think anyway, they don't have anything before three years old is because they're supposed to be raised <coughs> as a, as a uh, just caring for the kid before this age. And I remember reading lots of uh, different explanations about how they just adore their children and that up to that age, there's no responsibility beyond just caring for them and loving them. But at age three, they start learning to do things. Uh, this is how much food they get. This is their rations, basically. So they're just, their parents are giving them instructions and telling them what to do. And they're starting to learn how to, to work with their parents. Age four, this starts to become a little more intense. Kids are carrying things. The daughter starts learning how to spin clothing. Age five, the boys start working together a little bit, it looks like. Uh, both get a little bit of food and they're doing a little more intense tasks. Age, or sorry, for the girl, just a little more in different things that are happening with what she's doing. Age six, we see a little bit more of this, different types of things. It looks like they start doing a little bit of military type stuff at this age, which I think is about the same age as, I'm not sure about that though. But this seems to be about the same age as the Spartans used to start their training as well. Anyway, um, age seven, we start to see this start to change. So they're, they're having, just looks like he's fishing or something at this point, and then the daughter's just working. But when this is when the age uh, situation starts to change. So just like with the elephants, they were just being trained up to this point, up to age seven or so, they start to get more complex. But what is happening at this point, at age seven, is that last part of their brain is starting to develop. So the ego part of the mind needs to be controlled for them for now. So we start to see the parents become a little more angry at the kids. The kids are crying at this point. Uh, this is agave cactus. They get attacked with agave cactus if they do anything wrong. And we can see this escalating. So here's age nine, the, kid, the boy's being stripped down naked. Let's see, he was stripped down here too. But he's being poked with the cactus here. And he's being also, it looks like he's got a blindfold on. And his legs are tied, so it's becoming more humiliating, more aggressive. There's the mom yelling and poking her with a cactus. And then at age 10, the dad is attacking the boy, hitting him with a stick, it looks like. The mother's doing this too. You can see the kid's still crying. They're still learning how to do what they have to do though. Age 11, it gets a little more extreme. They have a bunch of chili peppers. They're burning in the fire here. And then the smoke goes into their eyes. And of course, that's very painful. This happens to the daughter as well. Age 12, more of this. So. The dad doesn't look as upset anymore. The mom doesn't look quite as upset, but they're still being embarrassed. And you can see the daughter, it looks like it's less so completely now. I'm starting to learn about the stars. I think this is supposed to represent the stars, but he's being stripped naked and put out into the field. I'm assuming this is just to embarrass him, but to another way of punishing him. And then you notice at age 13, this completely changes. The kids are just working. Now that they have complete control of their sort of ego part of the mind, uh, this is age 13. They, they start just doing their job. The parents are again, nice to them. And, uh, they're just, they're ready to be workers in the world now. Age 13, 14, and then I'm assuming so forth, so forth, and they'll become members of society. But this age from seven to 13 is that developmental one where the ego becomes involved. And you can see the parents being very harsh at them during this time, just like we were harsh to elephants during that developmental time. And people call this breaking spirit. But uh, also, I don't think this is necessarily, being a worker isn't necessarily a bad thing. I know a lot of people that work all the time, and that's the safest time they feel is when they're, they're working and doing something, even if it's just doing little tinkering type work. Uh, they need to keep themselves busy because or else their mind kind of come or their sort of ego comes involved.